Mount Rainier is the kind of mountain that you see on postcards, snow-capped, picturesque, and towering over the Pacific Northwest. It ought to be the tallest peak in North America, it's not even close, but its gentle slopes dominate the region. There's something almost serene about Mount Rainier, and that's the problem. Because Rainier isn't just a mountain, it's a volcano. It's an active volcano, and it's not sitting out in the wilderness tucked away from people and property. It looms over one of the most densely populated regions on the west coast. If it erupts, or more likely if the ground shakes in just the wrong way, it won't be lava that kills people, it'll be mud. A thick and fast wall of mud that's going to tear through towns and cities like wet concrete with nowhere to go. Now, most people who live nearby don't think about that. They see a mountain. Not a time bomb. They go hiking, skiing, they take family photos at scenic overlooks. The danger feels distant, abstract, like the sort of thing that might happen to somebody else some other day, maybe even somewhere else. But the thing is, it's not that unlikely. Mount Rainier is inches away from an American disaster the likes of which has never been seen in modern history. So let's explore, shall we? When most people hear the word volcano, they think lava, rivers of fire, burning everything in their path, Pompeii, Vesuvius, the end of the world. But Mount Rainier doesn't work like that because its deadliest weapon is not heat, it's ice. Rainier is loaded with this stuff. It has 28 major glaciers and numerous smaller ice patches covering approximately 93 square kilometers, that's 36 square miles. And when that ice melts fast, because of an eruption, a quake, or even a landslide, it mixes with volcanic rock and soil to create something far worse than lava. It creates a lahar. Now, a lahar moves like wet cement. It's fast, it's heavy, it's impossible to outrun. Entire valleys can be swallowed in just minutes. And it's happened before, in precisely the same area, actually. There's evidence of at least nine major lahars that have emanated from Mount Rainier over the last 6,000 years, an area which today includes a population of close to 100,000 people. Roughly 500 years ago, one of Rainier's flanks gave way, unleashing what we now call the Electron Mud Flow, which buried miles of land and left a scar still visible from the air. And to give you an idea of the scale here, this mud flow extended around 55 kilometers, that's 34 miles, covered around 34 square kilometers, that's 13 square miles, and was more than 7.9 meters or 26 feet thick at its deepest point, which is roughly the height of a two-story building. If the same thing happened today, it would take out multiple towns and thousands of lives before you could even say, how do you spell the ha? And what makes this genuinely terrifying is how quietly this could all start. It doesn't need a fiery eruption or a cataclysmic boom, just a distant rumble. And suddenly, the clock is ticking. And that's one of the better case scenarios, a little lahar, if you will. Mount Rainier hasn't had a significant eruption in recorded history, which in volcanic terms at least makes you wonder if one is just around the corner. But 5,600 years ago, a section of the mountain collapsed, not erupted or exploded, it just collapsed. That chunk of Rainier disintegrated into a roaring, suffocating slurry of rock, water, and pulverized forest. It surged more than 100 kilometers, that's 62 miles to the west, carving new rivers, erasing old ones, and dumping volcanic mud across what is now the Puget Sound lowlands. That event is known as the Osceola mud flow, and it wasn't some freak incident. At its peak, the flow was nearly 30 meters or 100 feet deep, approaching the height of a 10-story building, and it permanently changed the geography of Western Washington. And if that happened now, today, it would obliterate entire communities that would displace hundreds of thousands and trigger one of the worst natural disasters in American history. But ask most people living below Rainier, and they've never heard of it. I mean, why would they? It happened more than 5,000 years ago. So, tens of thousands of people live in the path of a potential future lahar, and many people don't know it. In fact, a lot of people probably wouldn't believe it if you told them. The towns of Orting, Purlup, Sumner, and Auburn all sit directly on top of the Osceola debris. In other words, they're built where the disaster has already happened, and could happen again. They'd be the first to go if Rainer's side gave way. Not in days, not in hours, they'd be gone in minutes. Scientists estimate that in a worst-case scenario, a lahar could reach Orting with a population of around 9,000 in under 60 minutes, which is barely enough time for a warning, let alone an evacuation. Sirens might go off, school buses might start moving, but for some, there just wouldn't be anywhere to go fast enough. And this is not a doomsday fantasy. It's spelled out in public hazard maps, with entire communities marked in red. 
The government and local authorities know all about this risk and have taken steps to put a warning system in place, which we're coming to. But if you walk through those neighborhoods right now, past the shops, the schools, the parks, you would have known that this small town lies directly in the path of a vicious mud monster that could decimate the community. Outside of Orton, several other towns lie within Mount Rainier's Lahar Hazard Zones. Sumner is a charming commuter town which is done to 10,000 people on the banks of the Pullup River. But that same river connects it directly to the glacier-packed slopes of Rainier. In a worst-case Lahar event, Sumner could be buried beneath a torrent of mud, ice, and rock within an hour. Further downstream, there's Pulup, a town of around 40,000. Despite its distance, it's still dangerously positioned. Both the uh, Pulup and Carbon Rivers converge near the city. Emergency management plans estimate that it could receive a warning of less than 90 minutes if a major lahar were to occur. Then there's Fife, which is closer to Tacoma, but still in the crosshairs. Its low elevation and proximity to the river delta make it especially vulnerable. A lahar here wouldn't just mean flooding. It would be a thick, fast-moving wall of debris with a force to wipe out infrastructure, homes, and lives. Seattle is roughly 96 kilometers or 60 miles from Mount Rainier, but it's not entirely out of reach during a major lahar. The city itself would not be buried in mud, the elevation and geography protect it from direct impact, but the consequences would still be severe. Key transportation corridors like Interstate 5 and the ports of Tacoma and Seattle could be disrupted or even severed. That means a supply chain chokehold, economic paralysis, and potential mass displacement. The Duwamish River Valley, home to critical industrial infrastructure and low-lying neighborhoods in South Seattle, could also experience flooding or debris flow if the Lahar manages to push sediment that far downstream. Even if the mud never physically reaches the city, the ripple effects would be rapid. Evacuees from affected towns would flood north, and emergency services, hospitals, and Seattle shelters would instantly feel the strain. On paper, there's a solid system in place. Sensors are placed all around Mount Rainier to track tremors, ground shifts, and temperature spikes. There are also sirens in some towns and emergency plans filed neatly in local government offices. Schools in high-risk towns like Orting hold annual evacuation drills while sirens are tested monthly. On March the 21st, 2024, the region participated in the largest Lahar drill in the world, involving some 45,000 students. And it went well, it went smoothly even. Evacuation routes are posted in neighborhoods, and Lahar evacuation route signs are fairly common roadside sites around the area, while communities have also built pedestrian bridges specifically for fast escapes. That's the idea, anyway. In practice, it's a whole lot shakier. Rainier is big, the terrain is wild, and Lahars might not follow predictable rules or routes. There are plenty of charts and paperwork on the most likely scenarios according to scientists, but to be honest, nobody really knows. And if something big does go off, the fate of thousands depends on some shockingly fine margins. The systems rely on perfect timing, working tech, and fast human reactions. They also rely on people being prepared to move, knowing where to go, and not hesitating when seconds really do matter. And not everyone agrees on how effective it all is. Some of the sirens are outdated or hard to hear indoors. Some evacuation routes are too narrow, and there have been debates over whether certain school buses could even make it out in time. Studies have shown that in simulations, confusion and traffic can slow down the entire process, sometimes to a fatal degree. False confidence is also horrendously dangerous, because let's be honest, humans are inherently bad at reading risk levels. We worry more about terrorists than about driving, despite the risk factors being in entirely different leagues. And a natural disaster? <laughs> That's not gonna happen, is it? Communities around Mount Rainier have been growing for hundreds of years, and the risk of Lahars is no secret. But how many people genuinely believe that it could happen in their lifetime? All right, so let's say the worst happens. Rainier's flank gives way. Maybe it's triggered by a quake, or maybe there's no warning at all, just a rumble deep inside the mountain. Within minutes, a massive chunk of glacier and rock detaches and starts sliding, accelerating fast, breaking apart, heating up, mixing with soil and melted ice until it's no longer a landslide, it's a ferocious lahar. A tsunami of mud, debris, and shattered forest. First, it'll barrel down the mountain's valleys. Rivers that normally trickle or wind lazily through the forest will suddenly become supercharged death corridors. It will hit the first towns like a freight train. Orting, Sumner, Pulyup, gone. Not damaged, they're gone, they're flattened, they're drowned, they're buried. If it happens at night, most people won't even stand a chance. If it's during school hours, evacuation becomes a race against time. Buses get stuck in traffic, parents try to find their kids, and emergency responders are overwhelmed before they can even begin. Bridges collapse, roads disappear, power lines snap, cell towers 
blink out. And because lahars don't stop where the mountain ends, the destruction just keeps moving, reaching deep into the lowlands, even into parts of Tacoma. In under two hours, entire zip codes are unrecognizable. The aftershock won't be seismic, it'll be social. Mass displacement, overwhelmed hospitals, families split, businesses lost, and histories erased. And all of it will be caused not by fire and brimstone, but by cold, gray mud and a volcano that everybody always thought of as a charming backdrop to their Sunday barbecues. It's really easy to ignore a danger that doesn't show itself. Rainier looks calm. It looks majestic. It's part of the backdrop, part of the family almost. Something you point to from a coffee shop, not something that dictates emergency plans. And that's the problem. Every few years, there's a push for better preparedness. A new study, a fresh round of funding, or maybe an update to the evacuation maps. By all accounts, recent Lahar evacuation drills went well. But they were evacuation drills. How well the area would respond if those sirens were to blare for real, and the very real fear of impending disaster tore through the area, that is anybody's guess. Ask locals, and many will say they're ready. Ask emergency planners, and they'll point to drills and protocols. Ask the average residents, they probably don't think about it too much. That's not ignorance. It's just human nature. We don't prepare for disasters that we can't see. You can bet that people in Pompeii didn't wake up on the 24th of August, 79 AD, and ponder the likelihood of their own demise thanks to the mighty Vesuvius nearby. No. Humans, they wake up, they feed their kids, they pack them off to school. They look ahead to their day. They think about work, or what to cook for dinner, maybe what to buy their child for their upcoming birthday. But what they don't think about is a natural disaster that could decimate their lives in a matter of hours. And maybe that's a good thing. Do we want to walk about with apocalyptical fears swirling constantly around our minds? No, probably not. I wouldn't. A degree of blissful ignorance, it helps humans live a finite life that could be wiped out in an instant. And for those living in the shadow of Mount Rainier, maybe directly in the path of an ancient cataclysmic lahar, they certainly need it. Thank you for watching. <laughs>